Hey there everyone, this is Shay Walker from All Garage Floors and today we have for you an eight year long-term review of race deck garage tile that we had in our garage. Now this wasn't a showroom queen flooring that we installed and just parked a couple vehicles in it for eight years. We actually put this floor to use. It was used primarily for vehicle maintenance as well as vehicle projects. So we put it through its paces. We are going to cover the good, the bad, and yes, the ugly of this particular type of flooring. Not only that, we're also going to answer some of the common questions people have about using this type of flooring, such as floor jacks, jack stands, and things like that. So if you are someone who's interested in race deck or some other brand of premium interlocking tile flooring like this, then this video is for you. Lastly, we're going to reveal the new flooring that we chose to put in our new garage. Is it going to be race deck again? Is it going to be a floor coating or some other type? So please stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button down there so we can update you with new content as it becomes available. And let's get started. So I want to give you a little bit of background on this race deck floor. Now we always had our eyes on a particular home and piece of property that suddenly became available and we purchased it. In fact, we're actually filming for the first time in this garage. Uh, this is a working garage and we're going to be using it as our studio, so it's, it's a work in progress. Now, as a result of us purchasing this home, we had to scramble to get our other house on the market and sold, which we did. And as we were moving out, I realized in the last couple days that I had not had a chance yet to do a long-term review on the race deck tile that we had in that garage. So what I did is I grabbed my phone and I just started filming what the floor looked like as it was a complete disaster. And then I also show you how well it cleaned up later that evening. Now, while I'm doing this uh, video on the phone, I'm telling you about the floor. I'm showing you some specific things that uh, you're going to want to see. Now, after this uh, video, I'm, we're going to come back here and I'm going to tell you some things about this floor that I think you need to know about. We're talking about the pros, we're talking about the cons, and I'm also going to show you some pictures that we took throughout the years of the various work performed on the floor and the different things that you need to know about. I'm also going to talk about some of the common questions people have regarding this type of flooring that has to do with like floor jacks, jack stands, and things like that. Now, the tile that we went with throughout most of the floor is the race deck diamond, the solid top tile right here. However, in the front of the garage, by the, uh, by the garage door itself, we went with this self-draining tile called Free Flow, and there's a specific reason why we chose to go with that for the first few rows of the garage, which we cover next in, this, in the video that I shot. Um, we, people want to know why we chose to go with race deck or interlocking tile in general. We have done a ton of floor coatings over the years, and we thought we'd do the same with this floor. But the problem was is that the concrete was really soft. For some reason in this neighborhood, there was about a row of five or six homes that all had the similar problem. It had a lot of floor dusting. It would, it would kind of crumble um, underfoot. We, we actually ground the floor and treated it with a densifier and still was not satisfied with it. We didn't think a floor coating would last long term. So we decided to go with interlocking tile instead, and I'm glad we did. So that's the reason that we chose this particular flooring. So why don't you take a look at this video I shot, and we'll come back and give you more details about it. Hey everyone, okay, so we wanna show you what this race deck floor looks like here before we clean it. And this is a house that uh, we're moving out of. This concrete floor just was not suitable for a coating. That's why we decided to choose race deck. And I'll get into that in our long-term review. 
the goal here is just to show you um, what the floor looks like. You know, we've moved everything out of the house. Garage is the last thing. We have stuff everywhere. As you can see, and we're gonna get it cleaned up and what we're gonna use when we clean it just so you know is this is our favorite cleaner to use on interlocking floor tile and floor coatings epoxy polyurea etc and this is parsons uh, non-sudsing ammonia and we generally use a quarter cup of ammonia to one gallon of warm water we use this microfiber mop pad and then this mop right here, this is an industrial mop. This is old as the floor, which is seven or eight years old, and it works fantastic. And I'll drop a link down below so you can uh, see what it is. It's, it's a popular item that people uh, find on our website and purchase through Amazon. Um, so yeah, this is the floor. And as I'll explain uh, right after this, when it's all cleaned up, is it's been through a lot. Um, this particular car right here is a car that uh, we take to the track, uh, road courses in particular. Uh, we've changed clutches on it, do brake jobs all the time, various work, jacking the car up, and uh, all done on this floor. And so I'll tell you all about it once we get it cleaned up. So here we are later on in the day after the floor has been cleaned. Actually, it's the evening time, so if you hear crickets in the background, uh, it's because it's night out. Um, again, this was just cleaned with the Parsons ammonia and water. That's it. Uh, it needed some spot treatment. We usually use Simple Green. We just we didn't have any. Uh, we were under uh, time constraint, so we just used the Parsons, but it still came out nice, particularly for eight years and for a floor that's just been abused um and not abused in a bad way but just well used let me put it like that uh, it does have its blemishes here and there for example um, right here you can see a tire mark and we have another one right over here and these are where the soft compound and sometimes even track tires would sit for periods of time on the car now we could have easily changed these out, but we didn't because when the car was sitting there, you didn't see it. Um, so uh, it wasn't a big deal to us. But for eight years, this race deck floor has just been phenomenal. Um, it does have scratches here and there. Let me highlight right here. You can see this is where we've had... Uh, Different car parts sliding on here. I think a transmission slid back and forth here a couple times when it was being removed. Um, there's been a couple times where, I'd say more than a couple times, a few times where floor jacks were used to, to lift a car when there should have been a, a board underneath it. Um, up here where there's mostly foot traffic, you can see it's shinier and looks nice um, here's a tape mark right here that's been there forever that's where we'd line up the left front tire of a car when we do a string alignment for the track um, but for just cleaning up with parsons it came out very nice one thing with the solid top if you hear me walking i'm kind of purposely walking on my heels so you can hear it um, that's kind of the hollow sound that some people complain about. It never really bothered us, and it can be more hollow in some areas than other. This floor wasn't the best in terms of being even. It's another reason why we opted for interlocking tile over epoxy and a nice floor coating. Um, but it's, it's just been phenomenal. We're going to talk more about it after this video and tell you what we really think. And for those who are curious, up here in the front, if that'll focus very well, is their free flow tile. And the reason we did that is because this is 
is a south-facing garage and the door would be open a lot during the day and free flow tile will not expand very much in direct sunlight. So we never had to worry about buckling of this floor at all. The only thing that would buckle occasionally would be these black ramp edge strips. They're always right in the center. It would tend to buckle up maybe a half inch or an inch and that was it. And for those curious, that is actual floor paint. That's not a coating. In fact, that's a one part epoxy paint that we just put on there and we touch it up every now and then. And that's why we don't recommend one part epoxy paint as a regular floor for a garage because this is the type of stuff that can happen. So there you go. We think it came out nice. And uh, so let's talk about it and, and tell you what we really think over the years and how it's performed. Okay, so now you get a better idea of how this floor looked after eight years of hard use. And as we said, you know, I, I think I mentioned once or twice we abused the floor. We didn't actually abuse the floor, but we, we, it was well used, but we did take care of it. Did it look perfect after eight years? No, it did not. Could we have made it look better? Yeah, sure, we could have. If I would have had more time, I could have spot cleaned it. There are a few tiles that could have been replaced and such, and it would have looked even better. But for eight years of use, we couldn't ask for more than that. If you, if you think a floor should look almost brand new after eight years with that type of use, then you know this, this type of floor isn't for you. There really isn't any garage flooring that's gonna look new uh, you know, after that long. Now, I want to show you some pictures of the various work that we did on this floor so you get a better idea. I know a lot of people do these reviews and you don't actually see things like that, but we just we just want to show you some stuff that went on. We uh, you know, we pulled the transmission a couple times to change the clutches, we changed suspensions on two different cars, brake jobs, oil changes, and a variety of different things. Uh, that we did with this floor. So I want to give you some of the pros real quick. One of them was ease of installation. This floor is easy to put in. It's a snap and no pun intended. Um, we had it down in just a little over two hours and that includes all the, the cuts that we need to make uh, along uh, a couple of the walls. Uh, the other one is the custom design. What's so great about Race Deck, as well as a lot of other floors, is you can choose to go with one solid color of your choice or you can mix and match them. Race Deck on their website has a floor designer where you can put in the dimensions of your garage and then you can choose the various colors and styles of tile and come up with whatever design you like. The only real limit is your imagination. Uh, let's see. Quality is another one with Race Deck. Race Deck is one of only two tile manufacturers in the US that make premium interlocking garage floor tiles. Yes, there are other, there are other tiles to choose from, but they are not top quality. So we're very happy with the Race Deck quality. These tiles are also very easy to clean. We had a lot of oil spills from gear oil to um, transmission fluid, that happened once, coolant, um, just oil changes that gone awry, um, and it just wipes right up. It's very hard to stain, with the exception of the tires, which I'll get into here in, in just a moment. Uh, another thing is the anti-fatigue properties. I really didn't think about this until the first day I was out on the floor for a period of time. I'm one of those people, I like to be out in the garage a lot, and after a couple hours it all of a sudden dawned on me that I wasn't feeling that hardness in my feet through the concrete and that kind of fatigue you might get in your toes and the bottoms of your feet and such. We've had a lot of concrete floors in the past with coatings and such, and you tend to notice that, and with this you didn't. And to top it off, um, along those lines, it's also, it's going to sound kind of funny, it's nice to lie on. If you're one of those people who work on their cars and you find yourself laying on the floor a lot because you, you know, can't get a creeper between you and whatever it is you're working on, it's much nicer laying on this than it is on cold concrete. And speaking of cold concrete, 
it also insulates you from that, which is very nice as well. So if you're someone who lives in a colder climate and you don't like being out on the cold concrete, you don't have to worry about it because this insulates you from that. Uh, the, the actual temperature of the tile is the actual temperature of the air, not the concrete below. So that's very nice as well. Um, let's see here. Were there any other pros that we had? There was, oh yes. If you damage a tile, uh, you can easily replace it. That's awesome. Uh, you can't do that with a coating. You know, if, if you damage the coating, you have to buy the materials uh, to repair the coating. It's a pain in the neck to do, and then once you do, uh, it always tends to stand out and it doesn't really blend in. With these floors, you just pull the damaged tile out, put a new one in, and you're done. It's that simple. Now, let's talk about some of the cons that we had with this particular floor. One of them is that the high traffic areas over the years tended to lose a little bit of its sheen. And if you, if you look at this particular tile, it doesn't have a glossy finish to begin with. It's more of a satin type of finish. The lighting might make it look shiner, shinier than it, it really is. Um, but it's a slow process and we really didn't notice it until one day when I was cleaning and just, you know, proud of how it looked and I start looking really close and I started to notice it. If you took a new tile and dropped it down, then, then it was obvious. But that's, that's something that it does. It, it does lose its sheen. It can also scratch. Uh, it is plastic. Uh, so if you're dragging sharp objects over it and such, you are going to scratch it. Kind of one of the benefits to the plastic though is that it's the same color throughout so you don't notice it as much. I don't know if you really caught on with the video or not, but when I was showing you the floor after it was clean, um, you really didn't pick up on that stuff till I zoomed in on that one section where we'd been dragging parts over it and stuff from underneath the car. That was a section that was right underneath a, a car right there. Um, so that's something to consider that, you know, it, it will scratch. Um, back to fluid spills. I told you that they were easy to clean up, which is true. However, um, there are some issues with that you need to be aware of that was kind of a pain. And this was particularly uh, common with like oil spills, any type of petroleum product. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is, if your spill went across a seam or a couple seams, you would clean it all up and it looked great. However, what would happen is that over a period of the next few days or maybe a couple weeks, that oil would, you know, tend to wick back up through the seam because these aren't, you know, watertight and you, it, it will get in between the seams. And when it would wick up like that, it would leave a black mark where the dirt and dust were collecting and have to wipe it down again. And after you do that a couple times, you realize it's not going to come clean. And so what I had to do was pull up a section of the tile, two or three tiles, whatever it may be, and clean the edges and snap it back in. And then, you know, we didn't encounter that problem anymore. So that leads to the next thing we didn't like, and that is unsnapping these tiles or particularly pulling up tile in the center section and such. It can be done. It's just not real easy. Uh, Race Deck has a video showing how it's done. It looks, it looks great, like it's simple to do, but um, because of the way their peg and loop system is, it's a very snug fit, which is nice, gives you tight seams, but it's also kind of hard to pull up. So that was a pain for us that we didn't like and we wanted to make you aware of. Um, some people complain about the noise, as we explained in the video. It never bothered us. In fact, it's kind of a comforting feeling in a weird way walking across it. Um, if you don't like the noise, um, you're never going to make it quiet, but you can tone it down by installing some landscape fabric. Landscape fabric will not mold or mildew. It dries quick if it gets wet, and it does a good job of a helping to absorb sound. Don't use cardboard or thin rubber mats and things like that that you see online because that stuff will deteriorate, it rots, it gets mold and mildew over a period of time. You don't want to use that. Uh, another thing is that it was kind of a pain over, you know, over time, but we, we just dealt with it because we liked the floor. And that is that you have to use uh, plywood 
under floor jacks when you're jacking the car up. Now, because we were working on cars all the time, yeah, that, that bothered us. It was a pain. For, for a lot of people, it's not going to be a big deal, but you need to cut a piece of plywood that's a little bit larger than the size of your floor jack. You need to make sure you have enough room for it to roll forward and back as you're jacking up the car and lowering it down. So grabbing that plywood and lining it up and such every time we jacked the car up uh, was a pain for us. Um, floor jack itself uh, it has a small round wheel and there's only underneath that wheel there's a, just a thin line that's actually coming in contact with the tile and as you jack up the vehicle all that weight is being put on that thin little surface area and so it will cause a big indentation in this in the tile which will become permanent so that's why you want to use the plywood to begin with now, I wanted to mention that point because that can be a con to some people, it's just a requirement that you need if you're going to choose this type of flooring. Now that brings up jack stands as well. It's very important that you use a jack stand that has a flat padded foot. Uh, we like to use the ESCO jack stands um, for most of our work. They're a tripod with a nice round foot and um, shoot, you can put thousands of pounds on the floor and it's not going to be a problem. If you have a jack stand with the angle iron type of feet, then you definitely need to use a piece of plywood under that. We found 5 sixteenths of an inch thick or greater is fine and you won't have any problems with it. Um, let's see. Tire marks. Let's let's get to that. As you saw, we had the tire marks uh, on the tile. Uh, part of the reason for that was the soft compound street tires and very soft compound uh, track tires that we had for the car. Um, next to it, there was a Subaru that, that parked there, and it would get a little bit of tire marks. And if I shot some. Uh, uh, God, what I use, um, simple green on it and such, they would pretty much come out. And the darker tiles, you don't even know it. It was if you had the lighter tiles. Uh, I don't know if you caught the video after it was cleaned and I'm walking around, but real quickly uh, by a wall, there's actually a round mark, which is actually tire staining. That's where we had our track tires stacked up right there over the years. And that kind of put a light stain in there. So that's something to be aware of. It's not that common, but it, it does happen. If it does, you can replace the tile. Um, so I also told you I'd talk about the ugly, you know, with this. And there are some things that can happen, and it happened to us. And that is we had a large section, well, it was of tile that came undone from one wall across to the other. And I'm showing you a picture here, a couple of them, of what happened with our floor. Now, the reason it happened is that I had our truck in the garage after it was washed and was drying it off, and I went to back it out. Well, what I had done before I backed it out is I had lowered the garage door just a few inches to block the sun out, and I forgot about that. And as I was backing the truck out, the very bottom of the garage caught the satellite antenna on the top of the roof. And when it started making the noise of ripping that antenna out of the roof, I slammed on the brakes. So the rear brakes, because they were on the concrete driveway, didn't lock up as quickly as the front tires did on the tile. And so when they locked up first, um, all the weight on the tile just grabbed it under the tires and pulled that section loose. And the reason it pulled that section loose was because the front of the flooring was weighted with washing machines and toolboxes and all that. Now, the good news out of that is I took a look at it afterwards. There wasn't any damage to any of the peg and loops. It did show some fatigue on some of the loops, but it was no big deal. Snapped it, just pulled it up about the inch it needed to go snapped it all together and you couldn't even tell that anything happened but something like that can so i wanted to make you aware of it all right now we did teach you a little bit about uh, choosing some new flooring for a garage it's actually for this garage 
and uh, we actually have it here and I want to show you what it is that we chose. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull our camera out here. And I'm going to walk you over and show you what we're putting down on the floor. And here it is. Swiss tracks. Um, we've always liked this tile. It was one of our two choices for our last garage. And just because of circumstances, uh, we chose race deck. And so now we have a chance to put Swiss tracks in. So we will be doing videos on that, writing some articles, telling you about it and why we chose it. So uh, you want to stay tuned for that. Okay, so I can hear some of you thinking already, all right, if you like race decks so much, then why are you going with Swiss tracks? Well, remember when I said that there were two top manufacturers in the US of premium interlocking garage tiles? Well, Swiss Tracks is that other manufacturer. So it's nothing against Race Deck. It's a great tile and we highly recommend it. Uh, we had an opportunity to partner up with Swiss Tracks and to install their flooring in our garage. And we jumped at the chance because we like their flooring. Uh, we are All Garage Floors, a website that reviews different products and educates the public. So this was our chance to do Swiss Tracks and we're very excited about it. Nothing against Race Deck at all. So with that said, if you have any questions about race deck tile, our review, or about interlocking tiles in general, just ask below in the comment sections. We always monitor our comments. We'll be happy to get back to you. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.